bring the message. I always say you can bring the fire, so Amen. the pressure then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um <sighs> so I just want to be blessed. So thank Emma this morning. Amen. Amen to Emma. Yes, amen. Good to see them both. And um see that Stevie's brought up from the covenantal country. Amen. Of Ayrshire. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. Yeah, the cover. It's going to be recorded, folks. Yes. Uh, well, it is recorded. It's going to be recorded. And it will be on the YouTube, YouTube channel, I uh, YouTube and podcast. Amen. The Covenanton country. Do you know in Ayrshire, there's 18,000 martyrs buried? 18,000 who did not bow the knee and say that. Christ is not the head of the church and their blood cries out I love that song can you give me the words of that song Emma I forget what number it was <laughs> search me O God and know my heart today I just I just love that and the last verse is in fact the second last verse says Lord, take my life and make it wholly thine. Fill my poor heart with thy great love divine. Take all my will, my passion, self, and pride. I now surrender, Lord, in me abide. O Holy Ghost, revival comes from thee. Send a revival, start the work in me. Thy word declares, thou wilt supply our need. For blessing now, O Lord, I humbly plead. Father, I just thank you that we just want to surrender our will today. We want to surrender all that we are. Lord, we are a small remnant. But we believe you can use a small remnant to turn this world upside down. But Lord, the criteria is still the same. That you are, Lord. Not just us pro proclaiming it, as Bill says, of one day you will be Lord, but you are Lord. But you want every part of our will. Lord, we ask today that you take every part of our will. I ask today that you take every part of me, every part of my mind, my body, my mouth. And Lord, may I declare your word as an oracle. May I speak the oracles of God, not my will, not my word, but your word and your will. Lord, may we be people after your own heart. And Lord, may we be people of the Spirit. Lord, may we know what it is to live in the Spirit. May we know what it is to live beyond the sacred veil. Lord, not just people of the flesh trying to build an organization that we call the church, thinking we're pleasing you, when actually, Lord God, all we're doing is building something that will come tumbling down. Because, Lord, you said you would build your ecclesia. Father, may we be in alignment with your plumb line. May we be in alignment with your will. May we build according to the pattern. Even if we have to wait years, Lord God. And it maybe will take years. It might take a long time. Just like Noah. He built according to the pattern. He did not add or he did not take away. Father, may we be aligned with your will. And may we be people of the spirit. We cannot do any of this if we're people of the flesh. Let's just pray in tongues for a few minutes. Ki aleandra bo so koro bo so tora ba sa kala bamba ra bo si kala yandra ba si koro bo so ndra bo so ko so ra ba bamba ra bo sa kala ba si ko la bo sa le aleandra bo so koro bo so ndo kala aleandra bo so koro bo si kala bamba ra bo sa kala bamba ra bo so koro bo so ndo Kala yariandra boso tura bosi kala bamba raboso kura bosa tarabashi tula bosondo. Shua raba bamba rabosa kara bamba raboso kura bosa kara bamba rabosi tura bosondo. Kura bayara bamba rabosa kara bashi kura bosondo rabosa kara bamba raboso to. Kura yale 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 yandra boso tura bosa kara bamba raboso tura boso kula bosa ka. She tell a bamba raboso, cora bosa, carabamba raboso, cora bushi, carabamba raboso, toraboya bamba rabosondo. 
Shiwara yara yara yandra bo so kura bo sakara bamba ra bo so kura bo si tura bo sundo. Kita la bamba ra bo so kura bo sakara bamba ra bo so kura bo sakara bamba ra bo shika. Shiwara yara yandra bo so kura bo sakara bamba ra bo so kura bo so tura bo sundra ba saka. Shika la yara yara yandra bo so kura bo so tura bo sundra bo so kura bo shundo. Kala yari andra bo so kura bo sakara bamba ra bo si tura bo sundra bo saka. Kala yari andra bo so tura bo so kura bo so tura bo so tura bo sanda. Kuala yari andra bo so kura bo sundu. Kuala yari andra bo so tura bo so tura bo sakara bamba ra bo sundu. Thank you Jesus. I feel the Lord saying that just as he poured out his blood. as the Holy Spirit has been poured out for us. The cry that's going up is that we might pour out our life and our spirit for the Lord. Amen. And for his glory. Amen. Amen. <coughs> yes, Lord, we want to give our whole selves to you, Lord. Father, I want to thank you for your presence. And that's what I want to speak about today. I want to, if you could keep your eyes shut if you want. Let's just stay in the spirit. I want to speak today about the awareness of that other realm, the heavenly realm, that place beyond the sacred veil. Alex, we were telling a story last week, I think it was, where Duncan Campbell was, I don't know if it was, some, I don't know where he was, he was somewhere. And God, it was at a convention, wasn't he? And God told him, it was in Lisburn, Lisburn faith, faith mission convention. And God, God spoke to him and told him to leave. So he had to leave halfway through and go to a small island. Was it Benetula or somewhere? North US. And God told him to go there. But what he didn't know was there was a man there waiting on him who already knew that he was coming. And th nothing was organised and already had advertised that Duncan Campbell was coming, even though Duncan Campbell was at a conference. And he had already had organised his bed where he was sleeping and had advertised a meeting with Duncan Campbell, even though Duncan Campbell didn't know he was coming, there was no organisation. What was that? These people were people of the spirit. They knew another realm. When Drew Black went to the Earl of Lewis and he interviewed a lot of people there, he said, these people were a different breed they knew about living in the spirit see we live in the flesh a lot of times we live in the outer courts we organize things in terms of church events and programs in the outer courts but these people are people of the spirit and i want to talk today about being aware of that other realm anybody i read about who moved in revival or moved in the spirit they actually were people of the secret place they knew God in the secret place. They knew the spiritual realm. A few years back, uh, I've told you this before, I had an major en encounter where for about two months I was in the spirit. Every day in the spirit where the, that realm was in me, around me, surrounding me. Even when I walked up my local town, I could feel the vibrations of the pavement in the spirit. God's looking for a people who will be in the spirit in that other realm, beyond the sacred veil, where only the high priest could go once a year. Only the high priest could go there once a year. That is now open. Bert's been talking about the kingdom. And I loved your message a few weeks ago. I keep telling Bill about the elders, and I will get onto that in a little bit. But Bert's been talking about the kingdom. But I want to ask a question, where is the kingdom? The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is within you. There's another realm that I think most Pentecostal charismatic churches are unaware of. And it's the realm of God, Christ within us. It's the realm of the kingdom of God. It's, a, it's another dimension. It's an actual other dimension. Sometimes we talk about it and it's just nice messages and these nice sermons. 
but God wants us to live in this other dimension, another realm, the heavenly realms. We need to be aware of the heavenly realms that surrounds us. Do you know the Hebrews, at least some of them, believed that heaven was as close as the air that you breathe? Heaven is as close as the air that you breathe. We think it's far away. We, in this Western world, we think of the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. We think God is far away. But actually, it's as close as the air that you breathe. As you just turn into that realm of God in prayer, in the secret place. In fact, it's inward. You simply turn inward to Christ within you. Madame Guyon teaches this. It's the secret place. Where is the secret place? Where is the Holy of Holies? The Holy of Holies is in you. Why? Because we are the temple. We are the temple. If we're looking for revival, we need to look into the Holy of Holies. We need to step in there. But actually, the kingdom of God is within us. God is looking for a people who spend time there, who know how to turn into that other dimension, the dimension of the heavenlies. We somehow can't grasp it with our great Greek mindset because we think heaven is far away. But somehow we are seated in heavenly places and we are on earth at the same time. You were talking about quantum physics. It's almost like we're quantumly entangled with ourselves in heaven. Because we're in heaven and here at the same time. I don't understand that. But we are seated in heavenly places and on earth at the same time. We can choose what realm to turn into. Oftentimes in the church, we have actually turned into the demonic realm, the evil realm, because we focus on it. In quantum physics, whatever you focus on becomes real. Like, things only become real as we look at it. If we focus on the demonic, if we focus on the evil, we focus on the principalities and powers, it becomes more real. It becomes magnified. But as we go above it, and look into his face. Why is it it says, as we, um, we turn into him, we look on him as in a mirror, then we are changed from glory to glory. God wants to change us from glory. I tell you, God wants to do a work in us that we would not believe. God wants to do a work in our day that we've never seen. God wants, wants to finish what he started. What he started was amazing, incredible, but he's never actually finished it. Alex, the other day there, said to me, actually, it was, I don't know, was it about 70 years after Pentecost? The Holy Spirit had been poured out. 3,000 saved in a day. Cities were being turned upside down. F 50 years or something. 50 years, 40 years even after Pentecost, that we would look at that and go, that's what we want. We want Pentecost. We want 3,000 souls saved. We want to see revival. We want to see the apostolic that they had. But yet Paul turned after that and said, all creation is not groaning for that. All creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Pentecost was just a first fruits festival. It was a prophetic symbol of what God was about to do. And it's actually only a tenth. Can you imagine... Can you imagine every revival, right? Maria Woodworth Etta, 40 miles away the glory would come. Smith Wigglesworth could tell someone to get into a shoe shop with no legs and tell them, buy a pair of shoes. And as soon as he bought a pair of shoes, the legs and feet grew in. Can you imagine Evan Roberts who preached, a whole nation is in fire, or the Lewis revival, the Hebrides, the fear of God came to a whole region. Any revival, the Celtic saints. Every one of them was a tenth. Every one of them was only a tenth of what God wants to do. We've only came from Passover to Pentecost, but there was another feast. It was a feast of tabernacles. It's about habitation. We've saw visitation. Revival is only visitation and it's, in gl it's glorious. I want revival. Maybe that's where we have to begin. I'm not saying we don't have revival. But it's only a tenth. We've received a down payment, the Bible says, when it comes to Pentecost. Pentecost was a down payment. 
A down payment really means that you don't have the full amount yet. In some way we have. It's a kind of mystery we have. But yet we're not functioning in the fullness. We're growing from glory to glory. And do you know, I believe actually this lockdown in a way has been a gift. Because I think most of the church was not in the perfect will. I think most of the church was not in the perfect will. I think most of it was in the flesh doing their own thing, trying their best. And I'm not saying God would look at them and smile and say, well done. But God's looking for those who will lay it down and say, who will build according to the pattern? Who will be aware of that other dimension of heaven? Where there's something beyond Pentecost waiting for a remnant. There's something beyond. I long for this. This past, well, it's actually been a few years, but it went away for a little bit and it's come back again. And it's almost like a, the only way I can describe it is a deep, 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 deep groaning. It's almost a sadness, but it's not a sadness because there's also excitement. But I feel connected to the cloud of witnesses in a way. I feel they're cheering us on. I actually feel the saints of old. And they're saying, yeah, we had something amazing. We had something glorious. But don't stop there. Do you think God's plan is just that evil wins and Satan wins and we all just, that's it? God has something so glorious. It's actually, and I've said this before and it sounds strange, but it's actually even beyond the apostolic. Ephesians 4.11 says, Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers are there. Until we actually know Christ and then begin to walk in the full stature of Christ. There's something beyond any generation has ever walked in. But it all starts with us being aware of the other realm. Beyond the sacred veil. The holy of holies is now open to us. It's a new and living way. Matthew 4.17 says, from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Jesus' message was, Repent, change how you think. Turn away from the way you were going and the mindset you have, because heaven is as close as your hand. Heaven is at hand in the terms of time, but heaven is at hand in terms of space. Heaven is at hand, like here, now, not far away in the distant future. Jesus says repent, that really means change your mind. Change your mind from the idea, from the idea, the concept that heaven is far away. Suddenly heaven is here, the kingdom of heaven. The domain of the king. That realm that you can turn into by just closing your eyes and focusing on Jesus. The kingdom of God actually is within you. There's a mystery now being revealed. Can you imagine the universe, how big the universe is? The stars, the galaxies, the suns, the moons, the planets, the light years. And all of that is in the palm of his hand. But yet he is in you and me. <laughs> he is in you and me. His kingdom, what is in his kingdom? Everything that's in his kingdom, somehow in a mystery, is in you. And we have to repent. And in other words, change your mind. Have a different way of thinking. Not trying to reach out to a God that's far away. As Bill says, we're not really crying out to God for revival in the sense of pleading with God. God wants to do it more than we've ever known. But I don't think we've realized what God has done for us on the cross. I don't think we realize what salvation really is. We've thought salvation is just the forgiven, forgiveness of sins and then you've still to beg for everything. When all the time in that other realm that you turn into, all the riches of Christ is there. 
Every blessing in Christ Jesus is there in that other realm. Every blessing we need. Every blessing. Doesn't it say some blessings? In Christ. So how do you turn to that heavenly realm? You turn by turning into Christ who is in you. You simply still your soul. You simply still your being. You sit in quietness. You contemplate. You meditate on the word. They called it recollection where you begin to turn and in other words, you focus your mind on Christ. And as you focus your mind on Christ, it's through Christ that you enter into that holy of holies, the most holy place, the heavenly realms where every blessing is. I think sometimes we've not had all the blessings that we need because we're looking for them in the outer courts. We're looking for them by begging for them when actually they're in another realm. They're in a spiritual realm here, as close as the air that you breathe. That other realm is here. Let's just do it now. Let's just turn on, just as we sit here. Let's just turn on to Christ. Simply be still. Simply turn on. Be aware of that other realm. Because the kingdom that Bill and Bert has spoken about and Alex has spoken about, that other realm of the kingdom, the domain of the king, the governmental realm, is actually in you because Christ is in you. And actually, if you need anything right now, if you need healing, if you need restoration of any kind, if you need, I don't know, restoration for your family, restoration of finance, restoration of health, just turn into that place. Every blessing is in heavenly places, so just walk in there, receive it. Just receive it by faith. Receive healing. Jesus didn't just preach that heaven was close or nearby. He said he lived there and the earth at the same time. Listen to this verse. This is John 3, verse 13. He said, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Did you hear that? I'll read it again. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. In other words, so Jesus said on earth that he came down from heaven, but also that he was in heaven as he spoke these words on earth. Jesus lived in heaven on earth at the same time, and so can we. Our born-again inheritance is to live in the Spirit because we were born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, Jesus, I won't go through the whole thing, but Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and saying, unless a man is born again, born of the Spirit, born from above, he cannot even see the kingdom. In other words, when you are born above, born again, born of the Spirit, you will be able to see the kingdom. We were born of the Spirit and are supposed to live in the Spirit like Jesus did when he walked the face of the earth. When Jesus was explaining about being born again, Nicodemus couldn't even understand it. He's like, what does that mean, born again? Like, can a man go into a mother's womb again? And Jesus was like, you're a teacher of Israel? Let me just read it. Jesus answered and said to him, are you the teacher of Israel? And do not know these things. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And you do, not, you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And Jesus went on to say, I wanted to talk to you about heavenly things, but you could not understand it. 
And I think the church has done that for 2,000 years. We've talked about earthly things. We've talked about earthly methods and earthly models of church and earthly models of church growth. And Jesus is saying to all of us, I want to talk to you about heavenly things. I want to talk to you about that other realm, that place where you can live beyond the sacred veil, where you can become transformed into the very image of Christ, where you can live in complete purity, complete holiness, the mature son, the perfect son, the man-child, a glorious corporate Christ on the earth. I think people like William Branham and all these guys saw this day and they were persecuted for it because they saw it and they were misunderstood. They were killed. They, they just they did not understand it. Like, how dare you say we can have that? Because William Branham spoke about oracles. He, he didn't use that word. But he said there'll come a day when people will actually be able to speak with such authority. When they speak to a mountain, it will physically move. We're just looking for little miracles where someone's knee gets better or someone's back gets better. What happens when we speak and a whole mountain moves? What would happen if the cloud parted? What would happen if we were like the Celtic saints and even greater? What would happen if we could actually walk straight into COP26 or whatever it's called and the security couldn't stop you? And you were just surrounded in glory and you could walk through the people, the mist of the people like Jesus. They were trying to throw Jesus off a cliff and he walked through the middle of them. In other words, if you look what it really means, he walked through people. What would happen if we walked into COP26 and stood there with the oracles of God in our mouth and spoke the unadulterated word of God to all of them? Imagine that. Delivering the word of the Lord whether they like it or not, and they can't move, they are struck with fear, with awe and wonder, not even knowing what's happening, but saying, no one spoke like this man. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the kind of people God is raising up. It's beyond just a prophetic gift. But we've got to understand this realm of the spirit, this realm of going beyond the veil, this realm of living in the spirit, not just knowledge about it, but living in it. As I said, Jesus wanted to speak of heavenly things, but he couldn't because they didn't understand. John was in the spirit in the Lord's day. See, we all love the book of Revelation. And I'll be honest with you, we all try and understand the book of Revelation through intellect. But the book of Revelation was given through the Spirit. And the only way to understand the book of Revelation is through the Spirit, not intellect. God will use our intellect, but he must come through the Spirit. Too many of our interpretations of these things is through our intellect. But John was in the Spirit in the Lord's day. I'm going to just read it. Let me see if I find it there. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. What does that mean? John was in that other realm I'm talking about. John was beyond the veil. He was in, we call it prayer, but it wasn't just prayer like giving out some requests. And I'm not saying we don't give requests to God, but there's something beyond that I'm saying. John was in the spirit, in that other realm, beyond the sacred veil, on the Lord's day. And then he heard a voice, like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see, and send it to the seven churches. I won't read it anymore, but my point is John, who got the whole of Revelation, was in the spirit. We need to be people of the spirit. We need to be people of a different dimension. And this is the part I really wanted to get onto, just a little bit. Because 
because it's to do with the elders. Bill had an amazing message a few weeks ago. I don't, if you didn't hear it, you should listen to it. About the revelation of how do we see nations transformed, cities transformed. And it's about appointing elders in every city. But Bill made the point, and I completely agree. When we use the word elders, we immediately think it's just people who support the pastor. It's just people who hand out hymn books at the back. As Bill said, they might fill in just to preach when the pastor's not there or something. That's not what it's talking about. Sometimes you've got to let the Bible interpret the Bible. So what does the Bible say about elders? Let's say the first mention, the law of first mention. The first place, well, it might, maybe there is another place before this is mentioned, but this is a really significant place where it talks about elders. And it was Exodus 24. And actually, this is what I'm about to read. Is actually the beginning of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin, if you like, was the government of the nation of Israel. It was heavenly government. It was the elders who were the government over a region. Like Bill was saying, the ecclesia, Bert says, Alex says, the ecclesia is supposed to be the government over regions. We're supposed to be the government, not just in a little church meeting, not just sing songs, although we love songs, but we're not against songs. But we're supposed to govern. We're supposed to rule and reign. We are seated in heavenly places. I don't think we realize who we are. And Bill was talking about planting elders, but my point is, what do these elders look like? Or what are they going to look like? Moses in the 70. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of lapis lazuli, as bright blue as the sky. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God and they ate and drank. And the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments and I have, that I have written for their instruction. When Moses went up the mountain, the cloud covered and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days, the cloud covered the mountain and the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. The Israelites... The glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up the mountain and he stayed in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. But my point is this, the elders, even in the old covenant, were people who knew about another realm. They knew about the heavenly realm. And for them to lead Israel to where it was supposed to go eventually they had to go into this other realm and in this case they actually went into this other realm and had a covenant meal with God this is the old covenant the elders went up and saw God Moses was called to come up even further come up the mountain and stay here and I will give you the tablets of stone etc the elders were the government of the day. The government was birthed in heaven, not earth. The Sanhedrin of a region, of a nation. The heavenly government was birthed on, sorry, in heaven. What would happen today if we as elders, or whoever the elders are that have to be appointed, but it's got to start with us, began to really know how to go beyond that sacred veil, turn into Christ, through Christ into the heavenly realms, and begin to meet God face to face. If Moses meets God face to face in, under an old covenant, how much more are we supposed to meet with him in a new covenant where there is no veil, there is no separation, where we're invited to come boldly to his throne, where we're told to turn into that other realm, where the veil, the curtain, was torn in two at the cross. 
not so that we can just live mediocre lives where we've been saved and somehow we make it to heaven, somehow one day we get there and in the meantime we just be good and do good things and have good church meetings. There's something about a people that God is looking for that will go beyond that sacred veil and live there. Ascended lifestyles, changing history like Reese Hills. If it wasn't for one man, Reese Hills, if you don't know who he is, you should look him up. One man, Reese Hills, basically, this nation today might have still been Nazi. We have been, might have been taken over. We might have been defeated in the Second World War because one man knew how to go beyond the sacred veil. He said himself that the Holy Spirit took possession of him and that he actually was taken into another realm beyond the sacred veil where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit lived. And he said, I live there the rest of my life. They prayed from beyond the sacred veil. They did not just pray prayers by walking up and down and shouting or whatever. They were in the spirit. And God's looking for a Sanhedrin. He's looking for a heavenly group of people, elders of this land. In every region of this land, in every city of this land. And it, I tell you what, it might not be in probably, no, I shouldn't say probably, I don't know. It might not be people in pulpits. I've said this before, a few years ago, someone said to me, we should gather the generals in the land and get together and pray for the land. I said, we can't gather together the generals because we don't know who they are. It's probably an old person who's 80 year old somewhere praying in their closet on their knees who nobody even knows they exist because the church has pushed them aside. It's probably an old woman like the two old ladies in Lewis who crippled and blind it's probably people who can't go up front and speak because they don't know how to speak. They're too, they're too self-conscious. It's probably the outcasts. It's probably the weak ones. We think God can't use them. The older ones that the church is rejecting because we want to be cool and relevant. Unfortunately, we want to copy other churches and be cool and relevant. We want our band to look right with the smoke machines. <laughs> But God says, look at the back, look at that old person in the back, look at that old man. It might not be age. As Bill says, it might not nothing to do with age, but oftentimes it is because they've been, they've been crushed. They've suffered, but they still love God. The elders are in, all across this land. They've been rejected like Jesus. I've felt it because I've, I've felt it for even my parents, like there's, there's nowhere to go, there's no church in the, in the town, there's nowhere to go. And, there, and oftentimes they've been rejected, but I tell you what, they're up in the night praying for revival. They're in the spirit in the night time. There's elders all across this land, whoever they are. And maybe they've not experienced what Moses experienced yet, but they will. Because we need to. We need to be people of a different spirit now. It cannot just be choosing people who have got good qualities who are skilled, who've been to university, and there's nothing wrong with university, I've been there. But it must be people who know how to live in the Spirit, and because they go there, they become holy, because you become holy as you look at the one who's holy. There's another realm for the church in Scotland. But it might come from a people that we don't expect. It's not necessarily going to come from the cool, relevant church that knows how to do good websites. The elders saw God. They met God. Rick Joyner says there's a day coming when the leaders in the churches will actually sit at a table and Christ, the head of the church, will physically be there with them. Can you imagine we knew the blueprints for this land, for the nation, for the city, by actually being with Christ, the head of the church? Why is it we try and be the head? Why do we try and be the head? We think, I don't, I'm not the head. We try and be the head because we build what we think God wants. If the elders under an old covenant were called to ascend into heaven to meet with God, how much more should we ascend under a new covenant? How much more should we lean into that other realm, that other dimension? We need to, 
an awareness of heaven. We need an awareness of that angelic realm. We didn't need an awareness of Mount Zion. Jesus, let me read about Jesus. One of the days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Let me just say, when Jesus went into the mountain to pray, Jesus did not just have a nice little prayer life. Jesus actually went into that other realm to be with his father. He, he was a man of the spirit. He knew how to be in the spirit like John. He knew how to be in that other dimension. He went into the mountain of God. He was in the mountain of God. He was fellowshipping with his father. And it was only after he fellowshiped with his father in that other realm, the heavenly realm, the heavenly dimension, only then did he choose the 12 apostles. In other words, the government of God was birthed out of heaven. The government of God for the Sanhedrin was birthed out of heaven. The government of God for the New Testament church was birthed out of heaven. And if we're going to see the ecclesia, the church, rise again in this land, it needs to be birthed out of heaven. It needs to be people like us who ascend into the heavenlies, who actually know how to get into that other realm, that other dimension. And God births the apostles, the elders, he shows us who they are from that other realm. It cannot be man's idea any longer where we just choose people because they're a nice person. It's got to be that we go into that other realm, into that place of the heavenlies, and we get the blueprint, the pattern from heaven, from God himself, from Christ, the head of the church. Jesus called the twelve after engaging the heavenlies. Even Jesus' prayer, the Lord's prayer that we all pray, sometimes we just pray it in a very kind of shallow way. But he says, this is how you should pray. The very first thing, our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. There's an invitation for us to encounter our Father in heaven. Each word here is an invitation into the realms of the heavenlies. It's not just words to pray. It's actually a doorway, a gateway into the heavenlies. Our Father in heaven. And then from that place, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're trying to build on earth what we think God wants to build on earth. But if we want to build on earth what God wants, we have to say our Father in heaven. We have to enter into the heavenly realms first. Like Jesus said, the Son of Man who is in heaven on earth at the same time. We have to be people who are on earth and in heaven at the same time. We have to be connected to the head. We must be in a place of union with God. In other words, in that heavenly dimension, in that place where we are one with the Spirit, one in that other dimension where we are seated, literally, our spirits engage in that place, that seat of government in the heavenly realms. Do you know the principalities and powers only rule there because we don't. We think the principalities and powers are there and that's just the way it's always going to be. They only are there because we are not there. There's a seat there for you. This is not new teaching. Reese Hills had this. Reese Hills had an encounter on a train where he was, he, he was taken up and saw a seat in heaven. And God asked him, do you want to sit here? And I believe there's an offer for us. A real offer to be part of God's government. That that which we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That which we loose on earth will be loose from heaven. But how do we know what's to be loose and what's to be bound? Because we need to be in heaven to see it. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. Only. Nothing else. Nothing added. Nothing taken away. think in this scripture you've probably read it before i'll read it once and then i'll comment on it and it's hebrews 12 22 to 26 and this really brings about what i'm saying it says you have come to mount zion this is new testament new covenant you have come to mount zion to the city of the living god 
the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. I don't fully understand this, but think about what this says. It says, you have come to Mount Zion. It doesn't say you will come. It's past tense. You have already come to a place called Mount Zion, which is the heavenly Jerusalem. In other words, whether you believe it, whether you feel it, whether you see it, the reality is we have all come to a place in heaven you are born again. When you're born again, your spirit somehow has come to a place called Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. And in this place, you're surrounded by countless angels. To the church of the firstborn, do you know the church is supposed to be there? Because we have come to this place called Mount Zion where there's angels and the church. And that word, obviously, is the ecclesia. But this ecclesia is in heaven. To the God, the judge of all, is a courtroom. God is the judge. Jesus is their advocate. Satan is the accuser. He accuses day and night. This is a governmental realm of heaven. We've all come to this place. I know that when I'm speaking, sometimes you, maybe people don't understand what I'm saying, but receive it in your spirit because there's a governmental realm of heaven opening up for us and sometimes we don't understand it and sometimes we try and understand things in a greek way where we're trying to understand it mentally let it go into a spirit let a spirit understand it first then your mind will understand later because we have come to this place called mount zion it's a governmental realm of heaven where we are seated where the courtrooms of heaven are where jesus is the advocate and we're surrounded by angels, and we're seated here. Ephesians 2, 6, 7 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We just read this, but look, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Somehow, whether we see it, receive it, or believe it, we have been raised up and seated in heavenly places. But most of us are not functioning there. I think, first of all, because we don't even know about it. I know I've read this before, but I want it, I love it. It's Reese Hills. And I, I spoke about it earlier. But this is a quote from him, just so that you know that I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and this is in the chapter in the book where it says the Holy Spirit takes possession. And the Holy Spirit was challenging him, saying, I want to possess you. I want to own you. I want to be Lord, basically. It says, within an hour, the third person of the Godhead has come in. And he gave him that word in Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And immediately said, Reese, I was transported into another realm within the sacred veil where the Father, the Savior, and the Holy Ghost live. There I heard God speaking to me, and I have lived there ever since. Reese Hills discovered the other realm. Jesus lived in the other realm. I believe the two women in Lewis lived in that other realm. They knew that Duncan Campbell was to come to the region within two weeks because they had already invited Duncan Campbell and they said he can't come. And the old lady said, oh, I'll be here within a fortnight. These people were of a different spirit. Why? Because they lived in another realm. They lived in the spirit. They lived beyond the sacred veil. Let me just read, and this is just a very practical thing from Madame Guyon about how do we live in that other place. And this is just a little snippet. 
He says, the first, thing, the first thing you must learn, dear friends, is that the kingdom of God is within you. Never look for the kingdom anywhere else but there. Within. Within. Once you have realized that the kingdom of God is within you and it can be found there, just come to the Lord. As you come, come with a deep sense of love. Come to him very gently. Come to him with a deep sense of worship. As you come to him, humbly acknowledge that he is everything. Confess to him that you are nothing. <laughs> Close your eyes to everything around you. Begin to open the inward eyes of your soul. Turning those eyes to your spirit. In a word, give your full attention to the deep inward part of your being. You need to believe that God dwells in you. This belief and this belief alone will bring you into the holy presence. Do not allow your mind to wander about, but hold it in submission as much as possible. And once you are in the Lord's presence, be still and quiet before him. There's another realm, there's another dimension that God wants us to live in. It's beyond the sacred veil. It's the holy of holies. It's a place open to us now. And if we're going to see revival, if we're going to see God move, we need to learn to do this in the secret place. We need to get him before him and be still. We need to be hungry. We need to say, Lord, I want to know that heavenly realm. I want to be aware of that heavenly realm. I don't want to live just in the flesh and the earthly realm anymore. I don't want just earthly answers to earthly problems. We need heavenly answers. We need heavenly solutions. We need heavenly solutions to what's going to happen in Scotland. We need to receive revelation from heaven about the elders and who they are across the land. The crushed ones, the outcasts, the elders who've been through so much suffering, but yet they've got the fruit of the Spirit. They've got Christ-likeness. Yeah, they've maybe been rejected by man, but they've not been rejected by God. God is going to raise up are people who know how to live out of the heavenlies now. Church growth strategies and ideas of man are not going to work. You could maybe get a crowd, but you will not get a crowd that's filled with God. God's looking for a people, a body of people who are Christ-like, who are full of him. And how do you get that? By going beyond the veil, by looking at him, by being changed from glory to glory by him by receiving holiness from him, not self-effort. None of this is self-effort. I'm not talking about our efforts. I'm not talking about legalism. I'm talking about the grace of God that changes you as you go beyond that sacred veil and are changed by looking at him. And God is looking for a generation in this land, in this nation, who know how to go there, who know how to be aware of that presence, that realm of God. The same realm that the saints in Lewis knew about. These are the secrets these people knew. Like the old man in the apostolic church, he was an old apostle. And he had holes in the trousers, knees of his trousers, because he prayed so much. But he was so filled with God by being in the secret place that he could look at anybody, whether it was a learned atheist, and he would just say, Jesus. And they would weep. What is that? That's someone who's in another dimension. They've been in the realms of God in prayer, secret place. They're in that realm of the kingdom because the kingdom is within us. It's not far away. What is it when Duncan Campbell can walk through a university campus and a professor looking at him through a window comes under the conviction of God and gets saved? What is it when Charles Finney can ride through a, a city and hundreds of people, he rides through it in a horse, doesn't he even speak a word, and hundreds of people are on the ground crying out to God for salvation. These were people who knew the secret place, they knew how to go beyond that other realm. They knew, there were men and women of the spirit, Catherine Kuhlman, 30 mile radius of the glory. We've got to be aware of that heavenly realm. We've got to be aware that God's called us to be seated there. To walk in government like no generation has seen. No nation has seen. This has not been seen before in a, in a revival because it's not just revival. It's habitation, it's fullness. It's tabernacles. It's God's glorious dream 
for a triumphant church. Yeah, the darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the peoples, but my glory will be seen upon you. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the other realm, the heavenly realm. Thank you, Lord God, that you've opened up the way, a new living way where you told us you can boldly approach the throne. Lord, we think that's just nice words. It's not just nice words, it's reality. It's reality that we can boldly come there, that God is looking for a throne room company, those who know how to live there and function from there. Those who live in union with God, union with his mind, union with his heart, union with his will. Those who know the ways of God, not just the power of God. Lord, thank you for your beautiful presence. Lord, thank you that you're taking us all in now beyond that sacred veil that the curtain is torn we can come in or we all come in now we all come in now by faith and Lord as we see you we worship you let's just worship let's just I'll turn this up a bit and let's just sing along to this in tongues we're beyond the veil by faith let's just sing in tongues as we worship him as we behold him shala yale yale yanda raba yando robo so korobo shala yale yale yando ura yale yale yando robo so korobo so ko yale 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 robo so korobo ro shala yale Thank you, Lord. Shara bamba rabaso kurabuso turabuso 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 tur